Hey guys, this is Cam for 15 join, well, not joined, back out with another video for review for you guys, and I'm back with another uh, Stargirl episode review, and what was a crazy episode, a crazy episode, man, that ends, the ending to this episode was like season finale type of worthy stuff um, there, but uh, yes, let's get into the episode. And essentially, this episode was, well, new JSA going up against new ISA. Um, so uh, let's talk about it. Now, the episode essentially starts off with, well, Beth at her dad's uh, job. And he essentially go or she goes on to tell him or find ways like, hey, I want you and mom to reconnect and stuff like that. But obviously, because they're divorced and everything, they're not. Now, her dad is like, listen, we'll talk about this. And everything. So when she leaves, Artemis actually shows up and she starts pressing um, um, Beth, essentially saying, well, now I know who uh, put my family, my mother and my dad into jail and everything and put them arrested and the whole fact that, well, it's going to be the nerd versus the jock. And you know how those stories turn out. And in the meantime, we also see... Um, we, in, in the meantime, we also see uh, Yolanda working at her job, essentially get confronted by uh, Isaac Bowen. Um, and essentially, you know, he's like, now I know what you did to my mom, my, my parents, you know, because obviously they're dead um, and everything, especially his mom. Um, so obviously he's like, well, now I know who are the killers. Um, so he just dips and he leaves, which essentially hints at the fact later in the episode they know the new identities of the new JSA members and everything and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, so, um, going on from that point, um, we have it to where Courtney and Pat, they go check out the whole, obviously, area that, um, I forgot the teacher's name, but the teacher's name, uh, the, the teacher who freaking was like paint man or something like that, who was just had just vomiting paint and going freaking crazy. You know, you have it to where they're literally talking like about things and the camera just walks out of nowhere and you just wonder like, did he hear any of this stuff? Everything and he wonders like, what the heck happened um, here? And now obviously to keep their identities I think, safe, you know, Corny is like, well, we just offered to clean up because, you know, obviously teachers in, you know, getting psychiatric help for um, his mental capabilities and everything and stuff like that. So. That's the whole thing going on there and everything. So, you know, they move on um, with the, dis they move on and they see this one picture where it's literally of, well, Cindy holding the black diamond and everything. So that's when eventually like, uh, hey, uh, we need to go. Um, and stuff like that. And give a B excuse to Cameron. So yeah, um, listen, I feel like it's gonna only be a matter of time before Cameron, cause Cameron essentially makes a mention in the scene, he's like, why do bad things always happen to good people in this town? Okay, he's, well, he doesn't know that his dad was a bad guy. He thought his dad was a good guy and he's also talking about the teacher and he's just pointing out the facts that, well, all these bad things are just randomly happening to good people for no apparent reason. But okay, yeah, that's not weird. They eventually leave. Now we see Pat go to obviously the garage to go get uh, the Stripe robot, but he ends up getting attacked by Isaac and Artemis, and he literally gets the shit beaten out of him. Like, completely. Hold on for a second, guys. Okay, sorry guys, sorry guys. But as I was saying, freaking Artemis and Isaac Bowman literally beat the ever-living crap out of Pat. Like, they do worse things like crazy. And it's funny, because Artemis is like, I ain't gonna kill you because you're my dad's friend and stuff like that. And I'm like, Oh my goodness. They essentially beat him to a living pulp. And essentially what happens is, you know, we come back to the commercial break. Well, you know, or what happens next is we see Cindy because Mike's was chilling out with the whole mechanic dude. And Cindy actually confronts Mike and she asked, well, my, or she asked Mike if she wants, if he wants to join the new ISA, but Mike, he's like, no, I'm not going to do that and stuff like that. But Cindy essentially says, well, I don't really need you anyways. You're worthless anyways. I just need you as bait, essentially, which we later find out on the scene. So we see Pat is literally in the freaking, um, 
you know, um, we, we see Pat is in the hospital after getting the crap beaten out of her. It was a very emotional scene. I like this scene, especially from Courtney's point of view, because she blames herself um, of what happened to Pat. And I really did like the emotion um, Breck Bass Bassinger was giving here. And like, it really actually hits you really hard. The fact like, you know, she's actually worried about, you know, a fa her fatherly figure in her life that he got beat him. You know, Courtney is like, I should have just went with him. I, we should have not split up. If I was there, he would have not gotten beaten up so bad and everything and stuff like that. And you, it, it's some real dark stuff. And it's like turning a dark corner. And then you got freaking, um, you know, you, you, you have um, Cindy call Courtney and she's like, I got your brother and you better show up within the hour. Otherwise, I'm going to kill your brother, your, your, your stepbrother, Mike. Um, so... Courtney goes up to leave and everything. And uh, yeah, that's the whole thing. And Eclipso obviously wants Courtney to show up there now. We find out what happened with the Stripe Robot is the fact that it got utterly destroyed. Um, Isaac and Artemis literally took it down piece by piece. So the new JSA go to the school. They confront the new ISA members. So you have obviously Courtney versus Cindy, which we've seen like two or three times in season one. Um, you have Isaac versus Yolanda and um, Artemis versus um, Rick. Um, now Bev eventually finds, um, uh, uh, Bev eventually finds, um, my God, my goodness, uh, friggin', I forgot the dang kid's name. <laughs> I'm so stupid, man, I'm so stupid, man. Mike, um, Bev eventually finds Mike and everything. I do like how Bev kind of used some illusions with the Dr. Midnight goggles, but again, Beth is kind of the odd, well, girl out in the whole new GSA because she can't defend herself. Now, apparently I heard she's gonna eventually learn some things to defend herself because I'm like, she's literally can't do anything and she's a waste of time. But um, this whole fight scene with the new JSA members versus the new ISA members, the choreography was great. I was like, oh my goodness. Um, but the fight that like made me like, just go balls to walls, like, like I'm just hanging off my seat was Artemis versus Rick. That fight was going back and forth, back and forth. They were slamming each other through freaking walls and everything. You know, when they had the whole bathroom scene when they're literally just throwing each other through the freaking stalls and everything, just smashing them through. I'm like, my God, they're going all out. Listen, honestly, in terms of combat, this was probably the best combat we've seen in Stargirl from season one and two so far. Like some of the best combat we've seen. Just great stuff, just great stuff. In the meantime, um, also too, um, Barbara actually calls up Shay to say, well, there's this girl named Cindy um, who's got the black diamond. So he eventually goes to the school to stop. And then and eventually gets to the point where it's the end of the fight or nearing the end of the fight, Shay intervenes and he tells Cindy, listen, give me the black diamond right now and everything and Cindy's like hell no I'm not giving you this um and essentially Eclipso you know overpowers Cindy a bit and kind of controls Cindy and kind of is trying to make you know well I guess instigate now Courtney flies through smashes the black diamond with the with her staff and it shudders into peace and this is when we get probably the most ominous slash intimidating scary moment in Stargirl we've seen and even in season one there were some pretty intimidating moments where it's like you actually for your character but here you know let me just say this well done well done cw well done that's how you create tension you know showing off the new i'm guessing i think eclipso is the big bad of this season um that's how you freaking debut a big bad you make him threatening scary just crazy like the moment Eclipso shows on screen, you're just you're you're just quiet. You're just quiet. I was quiet. I was like, oh my goodness. Just the mood and the setting, it was insane. So you have Cindy go up to Eclipso essentially saying, you know, you know, you were supposed to listen to me and stuff like that. I had you, I brought you back. And Eclipso's like, get out of here. Slaps her away and is like, you're nothing. Um and heck, he even she, he even pulls out one of the little daggers out of Cindy and just kicks her to the side and throws that same dagger at Isaac Bowen 
impales him. I'm like, oh, whoa. I was, I was utterly shocked when I saw this. I was like, what are we doing? What are we doing? And then he ends up essentially sucking up his soul and kills him. I'm like, they're not afraid to murder kids. Oh, oh, this guy is, this guy means business. This is a guy you don't want to mess with. And now we're seeing why Pat said a Eclipso is a guy you don't seriously and figuratively want to say, uh, you don't want to fuck with him. And it's just like, oh, now I see what Pat was talking about. Literally impaled Isaac Bowen and, um, literally impaled Isaac Bowen and just sucked his soul, took him away. What he does with Cindy is, you know, I'm guessing Cindy goes to like this, I mean, I, I don't think Cindy's dead. I think Cindy went to some like dark area that he can control and everything. Because you have Courtney trying to save Cindy and pull her. And Courtney's just like, please, please, please help me and stuff like that. And, you know, Courtney couldn't do that. Now Artemis, before that whole happened to Cindy, she probably does the most sensible thing like any regular person would do and just dips and gets the hell out of there. Like literally. Now I thought what Eclipse would do is see um, Artemis run away and then get her, but no, she literally dips. She's like, yeah, I'm gonna get out of here and find somewhere safe and probably go back to my orphanage home. And she just dips and she gets out of there. Listen, if that was me, I'm doing the same exact thing. I'm like, I'm getting out of here. Yeah, I'm getting out of here. Um, now, the other JSA members try to fight him. Um, they have no effect. Um, what happens with um, Courtney is she tries to fight him, but it seems like Eclipso sucked out like the life from the staff because the staff isn't even activating at all. We don't see that bright glow. And the shade intervenes and he ends up, I'm guessing, getting impaled. He's forced away um, and we don't know what happens. He kind of just dissipates and goes away and he's like in major pain um, and stuff like that. Um, in the meantime, everybody's looking up at the sky and they see this whole eclipse, which aka eclipse on everything and stuff like that. So essentially the episode ends off with now Pat knowing that Eclipso has gone. You know, Pat promises Mike that they're going to work on a new Stripe robot and the new JSA members are going to have to find some way to defeat Eclipso. But um, other than that, Eclipso made a very great entrance where, you know, it was insanely, you know, threatening, insanely good. The mood and the tone of this scene was insanely dark. It's all of these stuff that I would rewatch again, and it's stuff I just love. And I'm like, Star Girl is really good. Just the tone of the scene was amazing. It was crazy good, and I very much enjoyed this scene. Um, but yeah, um, next week it seems like I'm gonna be centered around Yolanda and stuff like that with her whole demons trying to overcome the fact that she, obviously she killed Brainwave and everything. But I mean, Andrew, very interesting to see where that goes. But other than that, I'm gonna go for guys. If you guys like the video, leave a like. In the comment section, your thoughts on this week's episode of Stargirl, as well as hit that subscribe button to get more CW content as well as other Stargirl stuff. Other than that, guys, I'm gonna go here. Hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day or night. I'm gonna this video. Until then, guys, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.